There's a video I made back in October where I asked the question, does it translate to hate? And in many cases it doesn't, but in some cases it does. And when people feel it necessary to state these things aloud as if they should be policy, yes, that is hateful. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be allowed to state those things, but if someone does state those things, someone should be able to call it hate speech. Again, I'm not saying we should make hate speech illegal. I'm just saying we should be able to label it for what it is. I'm horrified and ashamed that the city has decided to promote uh, and solicit pride in this city. Pride is nothing to be celebrated. In fact, it's an abomination. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8, the fear of the Lord is to hate pride, hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. According to God, we should hate pride, not celebrate it. Well, if you're going to word it that way, doesn't that mean if someone takes pride in being a Christian that they're sinning? We should humble ourselves as virtually the whole room said that we were a nation under God, according to the American flag, and we were... A That's one of the most ignorant things I've heard a preacher say, according to the American flag. The flag doesn't tell us anything. The under God part was added into the pledge in the 1950s and was added to the rest of our money in the 1950s as well. What is this guy on? A state under God, according to the Texas flag, we should humble ourselves to what the Bible says and not what the small minority here that is a bully would say. Wait, so just the desire to have a Pride Month is considered bullying to this guy? Persecution complex, anyone? In June of 2020, Mayor Jeff Williams officially announced the acceptance of Pride Month in June for the city of Arlington. But I don't understand why we'd celebrate what used to be a crime not long ago. In fact, according to the Texas Penal Code and Section 21.06, Please be respectful. Homosexual conduct, a person commits an offense if he engages in deviant sexual intercourse with another individual of the same sex. In fact, that is still on the books today, even though Lawrence versus Texas overruled that in 2003. Look, if you have those kinds of beliefs, you're free to have them. And you're not being hateful if you're not preaching them and if you're treating people decently. But if you're going around preaching this stuff and expecting everyone to agree with you, that's, that's hate speech. I'm sorry. Now, again, I'm not saying he shouldn't be allowed to say this, but we should be able to call it out as hate speech. But God has already ruled that murder, adultery, witchcraft, rape, bestiality, and homosexualities are crimes worthy of capital punishment. Well, what about eating shellfish and wearing clothing made of mixed fibers? And how about if your kids talk back to you? Capital punishment? Leviticus 20.13, the Bible says, If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And we have Mark Dice saying the same thing. I would quote some scripture right now, but unfortunately the Bible has been deemed hate speech in the New World Order. Not just the Old Testament, like Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, which you can go and look up yourself, but also in the New Testament, like Romans chapter 1, verse 27, or 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Now, the last example he gave in 1 Corinthians shouldn't be that big of a deal. You know, they're saying, oh, well, gay people won't make it into heaven. Okay, whatever. Okay, that's different than pushing the notion that gay people should be put to death. Now, let me just state really quickly that I don't completely hate Mark Dice, even though he pushes some of this stuff, because sometimes he's right about propaganda and Hollywood and television. Uh, but on these areas, yeah, he's pretty authoritarian. Romans 1 says that men with men are worthy of death. 2 Peter chapter 2 warns and says that in turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Wicked, evil, abominations. And we get put in the same category as someone who commits a mass shooting. 
That's what's wrong with using those types of terms. The Bible's right that what these people do is filthy. According to the CDC, homosexual men are 230 times more likely to get HIV than straight men. I don't know why we would promote disease and AIDS in our community. Sexually active and promiscuous gay men do make up a disproportionate amount of the HIV cases, but not by 230 times. Here are the actual statistics. Having said that, that's why we try to promote safe sex as much as we can. That's why PrEP is promoted as much as it is. If straight guys were able to have sex as much as gay men can without worrying about pregnancies, their numbers would be up pretty high too. Additionally, according to this article of self-reported crimes, I have a piece of paper that says this. I'm not going to tell you where it comes from, but this paper says this. The LGBT have an average of 20 to 150 children victims, and including they commit an average of 154 acts on their victims. Your statistics make no sense at all. What a bunch of fear-mongering garbage. Now here's the thing. They say that they love so much, but they hate children. They hate Baptists, they hate Christianity, and they hate God. They hate children? How about all the pastors and preachers who have sexually molested children? Not a word about that. You know, the, the, the church is infallible, right? And you say that they hate God, that, that gay people hate God. Well, yeah. Yeah, we do hate this version of a God that you like to push that says that our existence is an abomination. Yes, yes, we do hate that version of a God. It doesn't make any sense for someone who is gay to continue with Christianity or any Bible-based belief system or Quran-based belief system when it says that our existence is an abomination, that we're bad for simply existing. Now, this is why these sorts of messages do get considered hate speech by a lot of people. Now, if it's just about, uh, oh, the kingdom of God, then, then who fucking cares? But when you suggest that we're terrible people for simply existing and that we should be put to death, yes, that is hate speech. We should eliminate Pride Month. We should eliminate the LGBT department liaison. Now, look, personally, I think having an entire month of pride is overkill. You know, having a pride day, okay, fine. But if you're going to have a parade and a gathering afterwards and they're going to be sexually suggestive, then you should probably keep children away from those things. That's how I feel about it, you know. Now, if they if they get rid of the, the, the sexually charged stuff in, in those parades, then then, yeah, have the kids there. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I understand people's complaints about that element. We should eliminate the travel page dedicated to LGBT, and everyone in this room should watch the sodomite deception, which would clearly illustrate what the Bible says on this issue, providing actual stats instead of bullying people. What the Bible says is of no consequence here, okay? If you don't like Pride Month, okay, fine, but the fact that people want to have Pride Month does not equate to bullying, okay? The fact that people are rejecting your religion is not bullying. Stop trying to cram your beliefs down everyone's throats and we'll all get along. Thank you, sir. What's really sad is that these kinds of people don't understand just how authoritarian they are, and yet they're the first ones to jump and say, that's authoritarianism, that's fascism, if if people are trying to push different ideas from their religious ideas. It's sad. But, and even people like Mark Dice pushing these hateful views and he wants to act like he's not being authoritarian. It's just weird to me. It's weird. And over the upcoming years, we're going to see a lot of examples of the right pushing authoritarian views.